kiddos, we're back. We just did a whole bunch of vocabulary. You know what? We have a little bit more to do today. And we'll also have another demonstration at the end of this video related to what we're going to talk about today. So, you probably haven't thought about this, but I want to ask today why certain solutes dissolve in particular solvents. You folks know what the term solute means now and you know what solvent means. So I want to know why some solutes dissolve in some solvents, but not others. So carefully look at the picture below. What do you think this thing's trying to show us? So it looks like we have some positive ions, some negative ions, right, in this nice pretty crystalline lattice. Looks like we have a water molecule here. Notice there's the negative end of the water molecule. It looks like it's being attracted to that positive ion, doesn't it? Hmm. Let's look down here. We have the positive end of the water molecule, that hydrogen end. Looks like that's being attracted to the negative ion. Hmm. Well, let's take a look over time. Well, look over here. Looks like all these negative oxygens are being attracted to the positive ion that used to be over here, and they're surrounding it. Hmm. And now it's in the liquid phase, so you know liquids can flow past one another. So oh, we're moving that, that positive ion out of the solid crystal structure. Let's look down here at the negative ion. Yeah, it looks like it's surrounded by a bunch of these positive portions of the water molecule, that hydrogen end. And they're all facing, of course, the negative ion. They're surrounding it and they're separating it from the crystalline lattice. And once again, it goes into the liquid phase. It's in solution, and they can flow past one another. And it looks like these other water molecules are making their way towards that crystal as well. And before long, you guys can probably imagine what will happen to the size of that crystal. It's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Here's another illustration just showing the same thing. You can take a look at that in your notes and see how that illustrates once again where the positive part of water is attracted to the negative ions. And the negative part of water is attracted to the positive ions, separates from them from each other, and allows them to go into solution. So let's draw the Lewis structure for the water molecule. Just to remind us, we have H bonded to O bonded to H. Notice I'm drawing it in a bent configuration. Remember, it's a bent molecule. Um, we know that there's a really, really strong uh, dipole. Actually, I have it drawn the wrong way. Let's go back a little bit. It's like the dipole actually goes towards the oxygen, doesn't it? So you have a really negative end here and a really positive end here. And so we say that water is a polar molecule. Because water has this property, it's attracted to other particles with this property and also to ions, because they both have positive and negative ends. Now think about this. What if water wasn't polar? Do you think something like sodium chloride, it has positive ends and negative ends, do you think it would be able to dissolve in something that's nonpolar? Yeah, probably not, because um, the, the nonpolar solvent will not be attracted to the positive and negative ions in sodium chloride. So it would probably just settle to the bottom and it would not go into solution. Now, what if I had a nonpolar solute? What if I tried to dissolve iodine? Let's take a look. Let's draw the Lewis structure for iodine. It's I2. And you can see that I2 is linear. There's no dipole there, so it's definitely nonpolar. Would iodine be soluble in water? <laughs> no, it would not be. Yeah, you can imagine why. This time we're going to say, no, it's not going to be soluble in water because the positive and negative ends of the water molecule will not be attracted. to the I2 molecule. It won't be attracted to them. It won't surround them. It won't allow them to go into solution. 
So it looks like something that's polar can dissolve once again, something else that's polar, and also something that's ionic. But it looks to me that something that's nonpolar is not going to dissolve in a solvent that's polar. Um, let's draw the Lewis structure for carbon tetrachloride. Carbon tetrachloride, CCL4, and its Lewis structure looks like this. It's a nice pretty tetrahedron. And each of those bonds is polar, but the molecule itself is nonpolar. The dipoles all cancel each other. So carbon tetrachloride is nonpolar. Do you think iodine, which is nonpolar, would dissolve in something like carbon tetrachloride, which is also nonpolar? And the answer is yes, it would be. So nonpolar molecules. are attracted to each other. Do you think water would be soluble in carbon tetrachloride? Well, remember, water is polar. Carbon tet is nonpolar. And so we'd probably say no. Water would not be soluble in carbon tetrachloride. And the reason is water is polar and carbon tet is nonpolar. They're not attracted to each other, so they would not be soluble in each other. So we end up with this really simple, basic solubility rule. It's three words long. It basically is this, like dissolves like. Yeah, you probably said it before I said it, didn't you? Like dissolves like. What does that mean? Well, it means that a polar solvent will dissolve a polar solute. Is there more to that statement? Yeah, a nonpolar solvent will dissolve. A nonpolar solute. Okay, so it should make sense. Like dissolves like. Polar dissolves polar. Nonpolar dissolves nonpolar. So I have a little demo for that. I'm going to use water, which is polar, and hexane, which is nonpolar. Those are my solvents. And I'll be using potassium permanganate, which is ionic, and iodine crystals, which we already know are molecular and nonpolar. So take a look at that. And hopefully that will explain this a bit better. Then we'll be back with the next video when we talk about saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated in another pretty cool demo. So we'll see you soon, folks. Bye-bye. All right, kiddos, welcome. Quick demo here. Uh, we have an ionic compound, potassium permanganate. We have iodine, a molecular compound, I2. We have those crystals of iodine here. We have some test tubes. These test tubes on the left, I'll finish filling this one up. These both have distilled water in them. Remember, water is polar. It can hydrogen bond. And the test tubes here on the right, they have hexane in them. Hexane is nonpolar. We have uh, one already to go. Let me put some in the second test tube for you. So we have hexane in one side and water in the other side. Now, um, we're going to take a little bit of potassium permanganate. We're going to put it in water and see what happens. We don't need a whole lot. Potassium permanganate gives off lots of color with a very small amount of sample. And you can see when I put that in my water, boy, that dissolves quite nicely, doesn't it? So let's take it out and we can shake it here. So potassium permanganate dissolves very well. In water. Let's see how well it dissolves in my hexane. So we'll take a small sample of potassium permanganate. We'll put it in my hexane test tube. I'm not sure if you saw it fall to the bottom there. But trust me that it's in there. And boy, it does not dissolve in hexane. I'll put a little bit more in there for you. 
just in case you didn't see it the first time. So here's my permanganate, my potassium permanganate. I'll add that to the hexane test tube. I'm right down to the bottom and nope, does not dissolve in hexane. Well, let's see what iodine crystals do. So here's some iodine. Make a little bit of iodine. I'll put it in my test tube with water. And let's take a look and see what happened there. I'm not sure if you can see the crystals at the bottom, but the iodine does not dissolve in water. Let's put a little bit more in there for you. And we'll add some more iodine to my water. And nope, it doesn't dissolve. So let's try iodine crystals with my hexane. And I'll put some in my hexane test tube. And yeah, that does go into solution. So don't get that confused. That's not potassium permanganate. That is iodine dissolving in hexane. Take a few more of the crystals here. Place them inside that test tube. And you can see that iodine does dissolve quite well in hexane. So we have a molecular compound that's nonpolar, I2, dissolving in hexane, which is nonpolar. We have an ionic compound, potassium permanganate, dissolving very, very well in the polar solvent water. Iodine does not dissolve in water. Uh, potassium permanganate does not dissolve in hexane. Hey, I wonder what would happen if we took um, this test tube with water and potassium permanganate and this test tube that has cyclohexane and potassium permanganate and mixed them together. That'll be fun. Let's do that to see what happens. So let's see what we have here. <gasps> well, I'll be darned. We have two layers, don't we? So it doesn't look like the cyclohexane dissolves in water, does it? It doesn't. All right, and well, of course, there's one more combination we can do. How about this test tube with water and iodine and this test tube with cyclohexane and iodine? Let's mix those together and see what happens. And look at that. You shouldn't be surprised either. It's like the cyclohexane and iodine is on top. It will not dissolve in, in the water layer. It means it's emissible in water. So there you have it, kiddos. Hope you enjoyed my like dissolves like demonstration. See you soon. Bye-bye.